welcome to my thoughts while standing in the queue. And when Alexandra Schulman posted a photo of herself in a bikini on Instagram a few years ago, she created a maelstrom of comment. At that time, she was 59 years old and her body reflected her age. Schulman was a former editor of Vogue, a magazine that defined glamour as impossibly thin, tanned, and smooth. If you wanted to be accepted into the land of the loved, you needed to be young, skinny, and white. Her image that she posted on Instagram was old, saggy, and wrinkled. I grew up during that time, and I bought into that image. I acquired an eating disorder that no one had a name for. That was how long ago it was, because I was convinced that if I wanted a man to love me, and that was the only palatable option for women in the 50s, I had to be slender with a 21-inch waist like Scarlett O'Hara and a tummy so flat it looked ironed. My mother spent her entire life dieting, torturing herself by depriving herself of the beautiful food she cooked for us, all because she was a short, stocky Romanian shaped like a box with feet. My sister was a round ball stuffed with an immense ego, and I knew I didn't want to be anything like either of them. And so the minute I saw a curve to my tummy, I stopped eating. Just stopped. Shallow, brainwashed young lady that I was, I believed that looks made the man or woman, of course, too. There was nothing worse that I could imagine than to be fat or homely. And then I met Larry. I was 15, and so was he. He was shaped like a teardrop, balding with a dark fringe of hair around his shining scalp. His tummy sagged, and his bum was so prominent that his nickname was Buckets. His face was moon-shaped with bushy eyebrows over tiny eyes and skin so pasty white he looked permanently ill. He had very big feet. His appearance was a joke until he opened his mouth. Larry was the most intelligent, interesting, funny human being that I had ever met. I was a materialistic teenager whose biggest worry, besides my round tummy, was which cashmere sweater to wear with which pegged skirt. I was not intellectual. I was not deep. I was an empty-headed, frivolous young lady with a blank mind. And it was Larry who began to fill it. I soaked up his wise, perceptive conversation about what was happening in the world and his often acid and sarcastic um, re repartee, uh, which softened his evaluation of a world gone mad with its addiction to money, status, and appearance. I think he was my first love, but I wasn't his. He could always make me laugh, and he made me think. He forced me to see through my artificial values into the things that would make a valuable difference in my life. When we were together and when we were apart, I never noticed his looks. I just wanted to listen to him and I wanted to be with him so much. One day, I was walking down Adams Street in Toledo, Ohio when I saw Larry walking toward me and my heart stopped. I smiled and I ran to meet him and at that moment, he was the most beautiful human being on the planet to me. And that was when I realized that how little a bald head or bushy eyebrows mattered when I evaluated others. Sadly, my own battle with body image continued until I started stand-up comedy. By that time, I was 70 years old, and the slender body I had starved to maintain began to droop. My forearms flapped, my cheeks sagged. I was my own worst nightmare. And then I got on stage. I forgot what I looked like and concentrated on what I was saying. When I finished my set, a young man came up to me with adoration in his eyes and he asked me to sign his ticket. I looked at this person so filled with admiration and love and I remembered Larry and how gorgeous he was to me. And it was at that moment I realized how beautiful I am. 
And thank you so much for joining me for my thoughts while standing in the queue.